Hey everybody, we're talking about secondary leading tone chords today. They're very similar to secondary dominance. Just as we can have secondary dominance, those temporary 5-1 progressions in keys other than tonic, we too can have 7-1 to one progressions as well. Remember the leading tone triad and the leading tone seventh function dominantly, just like a 5 or 5-7 five chord. So we can tonicize chords other than tonic using secondary uh, leading tone chords or secondary diminished chords. And that's our topic for today. So what we're going to do is take a look at the guide I wrote for you called secondary diminished chords. And we're going to take a look at how these work um, in a couple of progressions. Take a look at example one. Here I have a progression that has a lot of chromatic chords in it. Um, and we are going to be on the lookout for secondary dominance and secondary diminished chords. If you look at the first four chords that I've written in this progression, you will notice the chromatic chord is a seven fully diminished seven of two, tonicizing two. Before we analyze the other chords in this progression, let's make sure we understand why this is a secondary diminished chord. So the chord we are tonicizing is D minor, the two chord in the overall key of C major. That means for a moment we are thinking in the key of D minor. The leading tone of D minor is C sharp. And what we see here is a fully diminished seventh chord with the root of C sharp. Those notes are C sharp, E, G, B flat, sounding like this. Tonicizing the two chord. So instead of using a five or five seven of two, which would have had the root of A, being scale degree five in the key of two, we're now tonicizing using the leading tone as the root of the chord. Okay, so what I wanna do now is take a look at the rest of the progression and see if we can walk through the analysis. What you will see is that the chords on the downbeats of measures three, four, and five are all chromatic. They are going to be secondary chords, and the chords they go to are the chords they are tonicizing. To do the analysis, I like to look at the diatonic tonicized chord first, and then relate the chromatic chord that precedes it to that chord. So take a look at this chord here. We identify the root as A. I see two A's, one C, one E. That is an A minor triad, which in the key of C major is six. So I am going to assume the chord before it, which is chromatic, is either going to be a secondary dominant or secondary diminished chord tonicizing the six. Let's check it out and see if we can make a stack of thirds and figure out what is going on with this chord. I see two Bs, I see a D, I see a G sharp here. How can we rearrange those three notes to make a stack of thirds? The root is G sharp. The third is B, which is doubled. And the fifth is D. The quality of this chord is diminished, and G-sharp is its root. G-sharp is the secondary leading tone to A, which is indeed the root of the chord it goes to. Thus, the label for this chord is going to be 7 diminished 6 of 6. Here, we are not using a 7th chord, but rather just a triad, G-sharp B, D. And I do need to remember to put the figured base six symbol in to show that it is in first inversion because the root is not in the base position, but rather the third of the chord is. Let's do the same process for the next measure. Can you identify the Roman numeral for the second chord 
in measure four. This is an F major chord, which would be labeled with a big Roman numeral four in the key of C major. Now take a look at the chromatic chord that precedes the four. Can you identify its root? The root of this chord is E. When we determine the stack of thirds from E, we find we have a seventh chord, E, G, B flat, and D flat. The quality of this chord is fully diminished seven. Thus, the Roman numeral is going to be seven fully diminished six five, of four. Again, the root being E is the secondary leading tone to four. That's how we know we use the Roman numeral seven. The quality is fully diminished, all minor thirds, all the time. That's why we use the little circle. And we're using the 6-5 because the third of the chord is in the base. And 6-5 is the figured base for a first inversion seventh chord. Just one more tonicization to go here. Look at the second to last chord. What is the Roman numeral for that? That is a big five chord. G is the root, and that is the dominant scale degree in the key of C major. Now consider the chord that immediately precedes the five chord. Can you identify its root? The root of the chord is in the base. It is F sharp. And if we spell the chord in a stack of thirds, we find we have all four notes for a seventh chord. F sharp, A, C, E flat. This is again another fully diminished seventh chord. The root is F sharp, which is the secondary leading tone to scale degree five in the key. Therefore, we know it is going to be a secondary diminished chord. The Roman numeral is going to be seven fully diminished seven of five. And just to finish things off, the progression ends with a tonic chord. All right, that was a lot of work. Let's hear the payoff and get to hear what these cool chromatic chords sound like in the context. This is what example one sounds like. Now I'd like to turn your attention to the next example. These are going to be some secondary diminished chords in minor. Rather than walk you through the whole process like we did in example one, I'm going to invite you now to pause the video and see if you can't come up with the Roman numerals for this passage. Then once you have your answers, resume playing the video and we'll go over those answers together and get to listen to the progression. So here are the answers I came up with. I'd like to point out a few features. First, the very first um, fully diminished seventh chord we get is actually not a secondary diminished chord, but rather a primary diminished chord. The symbol is simply seven fully diminished six five occurring in the key of A minor built on the primary leading tone G sharp as the root. The root of this chord is G sharp. 
And the stack of thirds go G sharp, B, D, F. Thus creating a fully diminished seven in first inversion. The other two fully diminished seventh chords in this passage are indeed secondary diminished chords. I have highlighted these here. Both are in root position built on the secondary leading tones of the chords they tonicize. Let's listen to this progression. I'd like to play this one more time. And this time, I would invite you to sing the bass line with me in whatever register works best for your voice in solfege. Ready and go. Do. I hope those examples got you a little more excited about possibilities, not just with secondary dominant chords, but secondary uh, diminished chords. These can be diminished triads. These can be fully diminished seventh chords, or it is also possible to have half diminished seventh chords as well. Though I think the fully diminished sevenths are a little more common, which is why I emphasized them in the examples I just shared with you. Our next step is going to be to practice spelling some of these, and I have a guide for you to read on Moodle uh, to show you how to do that, and then some exercises for you to complete. <laughs> 